welcome back everyone today <laughs> to another video with this time for Don Flamingo. Now I was gonna do an um, OP for Mondays, uh, but the problem is that the, all the cards haven't been added to the scene, and the players that I'm playing right now on the scene are not like the best ones to showcase. So I'm gonna hold on on uh, OP for Mondays until they release the full set and more people are willing to test the uh, the set, more people that are trying to be competitive. Uh, because at the moment, I, I haven't been able to find good games. And um, just missing cards is not like that fun to play, like to test the next set until the, everything is full release. So uh, I'm going to wait until they update the same for that. But in the meantime, um, I decided to play Flamingo. Uh, I wanted to see how it does into OP3 format now. And I'm pleasantly surprised to say that the deck actually is very good. I did want to test. Uh, it's basically the same deck that we were playing before. Uh, I did wanted to test out the Soge King because it basically replaces the Don Flamingo in the deck as it offers that flexibility where you don't always have to go for this play on turn 7. Uh, as with the other Flamingo, you kind of sometimes were forced to because if you have too many cards that you can counter with, you have to get it out of your hand and this was like the best way to do so. But the Soge King does offer you that option where if you need to remove something, a 6k body out of the board, then you do it and you get some value out of this car. Uh, but if you don't have to and you can just keep using the leader ability and keep offering that pressure, you can just do that. You have that option and you can always use it as a 1k corner. So it was good enough for that reason. And I liked it for that reason a little bit. So I don't know if it's completely cemented into the deck. Like it's going to be like a, a staple for the deck. Uh, but I like it for the meantime uh, and it was good enough. Um, I'm still playing the Mihawk as a 4 because I think in this format it's going to be a really win condition. Uh, as against red decks, it removes everything that, like all the blockers, which is really nice. And I, against any other decks, it just offers a solid win condition, a 9k body that you can protect behind blockers and behind your corners. Uh, it's going to be really good. So, yeah, it's still very important for the deck. I'm playing it as a 4 up, I think it's great. And now it's not so much of a break because you're playing the Soggy King as a replacement for the uh, for the seven drop Mihawk. Um, as the for the rest of the deck is something that we've seen before, uh, just a bunch of uh, value uh, warlords that you can play out of the leader. Uh, just two of the blo law blockers because you don't need too many of that one. Uh, I'm playing 10 2K Connors. Choose whatever you want; it doesn't really matter. Um, the Spada is just another two more of that one. Always like to play 4-4 four, four love, love Beams. It, this card is just way too good. And yeah, everything else is just things that we've seen before and I have explained before. So um, yeah, let's go see some of the gameplay and see what I'm talking about. All right, and we're going to have a deck that is going to have a decent matchup against us. Um, I'm going to Mulligan, of course. Although the Mihawk is a good, a hard card for them to answer, so... I'm probably gonna have to do back to back. This is actually a very good Hana. No going to lie here. Um, now I could risk it and try to hit with my um, leader for free here. But if I don't, I just take a life and I don't do anything. I think it's worth it because next turn I'm gonna be able to do like to play something and do it anyway. So. Yeah, I think it's worth to try to get here, Lucky. We didn't, but that's fine. Because next turn, we're going to be able to. So, this car is going to be annoying. They're going to be able to remove or... Uh, I mean, at least this one is going to be hard to remove. It's not going to be that easy. Uh, this one, they can just do the... Um, what you might call it the uh, the fist on him and it's gonna be uh, effective on either those three, this spy case so uh, I'm probably not trying to do oh, okay so it worked out in the end for me I guess uh, draw a car he's gonna attack for five I assume he's not gonna take this one or who knows he might he might want to okay that's what I thought I'm gonna deploy this one and I'm gonna try to set up the top of my deck. Uh, remember, I'm gonna try to play back to back uh, Mihawk. I think it's gonna be really good against him, especially if they play like Marco or something like that, that I can just bottom deck to the top of to the, uh, to the deck. 
and I don't have to deal with them for the rest of the game. Um, it's going to be really good for me. So he's definitely the best card in my deck. Yeah, exactly. He attacks for five, no blocker. Look at the top. That's perfect. I'm going to do top. And then um, let's draw the 2k, I guess. Because so I cannot draw both of them, right? I don't think so, no. So let's draw the 2k. Let's do this one, this one, and this one. So it's going to be back to back to back Mihawk, this game. <laughs> it would seem like. Okay, that's fine. I knew that was going to happen, so that's not a surprise there. We're going to try to keep playing like the blocker and something else. So next turn, can I play both? I don't think so. But at least I can advance the game plan a little bit. Oh yeah, I can play both. And they're not that easy to... Like, two of them is not that easy to, to remove. And they don't actually want to remove them. Uh, they would rather not. Uh, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going into the Mihawk turn, which is very, very nice. Uh, hopefully he does play something so I can bottom deck it. But if he doesn't, it's fine. I uh, guess I'll combo to that one. Why not? I can uh, later on play against Komoria and get ahead of that. But I think he's playing for the 9 drop. It would look like it. Uh, he also could just be playing two removal spells here, but he doesn't really want to remove this. So advancing the um, the 9 drop could be really good for him. But I, I, I assume he's going to be playing for the 9 drop. For the big white beer. Which is going to be a decently hard card to bid. It shouldn't be that bad. Gun Gum, Jet Pistol. I don't think he wants to Jet Pistol, but he's probably going to be forced to. Either way. I'm going to attack him for 5-5. Five, five. I mean, I'm okay with that. But, oh yes, he played it. <laughs> so good for me. Alright, well. Send your Marco back to the deck. I'm going to attack for 5. I'm definitely even if he plays the nine drop, I'm gonna play another uh, Mihawk. Cause he's gonna be preoccupied with the five case here that I have. So Okay, instead of doing Jet Pistol, he's gonna Yeah, he didn't do Jet Pistol and he got punished for that. I am okay with this. This is the result that I was looking for. And if he plays a blocker, I bottom deck it too. Oh, he doesn't have it. Oh. Interesting. Actually, it's kind of worth to play the Gekko Moria here. So I'm going to do it. Because I think he's going to play a blocker. And we're going to bottom deck the blocker too. Because he would have played the 9. Oh, he could play the ace. But he should have played it before. I don't know. It would seem like that would be the best case. Or he's going to try to remove the Mihawk. In which case... I'll think about what I'm going to do. If that's the case. Round table, remove the Mihawk. Okay. Okay, okay. I dig that. I dig that. Oh. Okay, yeah, of course. That removes the Mihawk. That's a good combo here. I like that. But since I have another Mihawk, we'll take advantage of that. And then attack for fives, which he doesn't really want to combo one case on everything because he's losing uh, advantage. So we definitely got something good going on here. And if he wants to get cars, he won't be able to remove my Mihawk. And as I was saying, Mihawk is actually a very difficult card for them to remove. Um, he was thinking about not comboing the with Seaquake. Because he will need like a combination of cards to be able to um, like to not get damage. And then the Iso was probably going to try to search for um, 
for the uh, white beer or I mean a blocker maybe uh, but again he's still in the same problem this Mihawk is gonna be a problem for him uh, no I'm gonna well he's not gonna play okay so I have to be careful here because he's not gonna play um the um okay so let's play this one this one and this one yeah that's perfect because uh, he's not going to play the, the 9 drop because he would have played it before. He's going to play the blocker most likely, which I'm going to put on deck again. So that's why I did this play. Uh, this is a 2 card combo then. Okay, in that case I can play the top card. My oh, no, this case. <laughs> that's how I was saying. I'm playing Mihawk. So here I'll just put on deck that one. And <laughs> yeah, it should be over. Oh, he's going to do a uh, trigger out of life, it seems like. Okay. Well, now I don't have to attack with that one. Uh, I'll just attack with this one, five. And play the Perona. And then set up my next few uh, draws. Place on top. I'm definitely going to try to play this one next turn. So the blocker is actually kind of decent. Um, so let's do Perona. Draw the blocker, uh, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And then, yeah, that's what I was saying. The Mihawk is insane in this matchup. Been able to bottom deck those uh, blockers and Marcos, insane. They don't have any pressure against us. They don't have anything to uh, be able to come back here. Only the 9 drop would be good in this matchup. Uh, but I think it's too little too late. Uh, there is no way that he can win this matchup any anymore. He gets a radical beam and uh, did he whiff out of the uh, this one? Wow, he's just been getting uh, super unlucky here. Yeah, that one dies. That's fine. I don't have anything to play, but it doesn't matter. I will just attack with the leader for seven. Use action. Play this one. Get the blocker back, I guess. I can play it. It's another potential attacker. Then attack for seven. Because, I mean, he needs a radical beam here if he wants to. Okay. Well, attack for uh, five. <laughs> And then attack for uh, 10. Unless he got a trigger out of life, uh, that should be enough. And yeah. Um, I got the radical beam out of life. But that, that was enough uh, for me to win here. All right. And we're going to play against um, Lushi. Um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm mulligan the hand because... Um, I didn't have anything to search uh, to secure the top of my deck. Um, now, I could do it blindly here, but I do have uh, a 3-drop, so I can guarantee it next turn. So, I am going to do that. That's that's better for me, uh, rather than they just take a chance and uh, miss that at the top of my deck. Here, I can guarantee a body and uh, guarantee that I'm going to hit. Uh, this is an interesting decision, because I might want to... Um, Maybe combo and play a, a Gecko or I just play the Boa and I want to keep the Love Love. I'm thinking I'm just going to put the uh, Gecko, Gecko, Boa. And then we'll see from there how my what, what my opponent plays, what my opponent does. And then we'll decide what we want to do here. And then we'll, lo we'll draw the Love Love Beam because we're going to be able to keep it up next turn uh, for like anything like that. And then um, he attacks for five. Might as well combo early because uh, I know this deck can just do dual attack, dual attack. So I don't want to have to deal with that later on. Uh, I just want to do it right now and just I combo with the boa because I mean I don't want to combo my two K. And um, and yeah. By the way, I should in the first turn I should have uh, set up the uh, the two K counter first, but it's okay. It's not the biggest problem. He does the four uh, energy uh, spell, so he can play uh, the blocker. Well, this guy that becomes a blocker, um, which is fine. Um, I don't mind. His deck is doing what he wants to do, and my deck is doing what he wants to do. 
So we're equally matched right now, I would say. Uh, I don't I don't think we uh, anyone is in like, in advantage right now. I do have to be careful because next turn is gonna be the uh, the a drop turn. So I do have to play around that a little bit. But this leader at least plays around it very well uh, for what it's worth. Um, I will combo a 2k here because I want him to com to attack me with the with the blocker. Uh, however, he plays a Garp. Interesting card to play in that leader. It's not bad. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just interesting. Um, he uses that. And is he going to attack with this guy? He does not attack with that guy. Okay, in that case, I'm just going to play the Usopp. Uh, get two cards. Um, this card too. This, this card is a little bit tough. Because uh, all the cards in my hand are actually very good. Uh, but I'll take it like this. It's fine. Um, Usopp is going to be really hard to KO for my opponent. So if he wants to KO my blocker, that's fine. Um, I'll let it be. It's not the, the biggest problem. Um, I'll attack for 5. Because again, if he wants to combo out of this, it's fine. The less cards he has in hand, the better for me. Um, and I'm, I can play the grind game very well here. Combos a 2k, so that's really good for me. And he tells me he doesn't have too many. Well, he has a 1k that I know of, but he doesn't want to uh, do it because he wants to save it for a later turn. Uh, it's fine. I don't really mind. Uh, again, I do have to be careful because he's at 8 energy. So I do want to be uh, like cognizant of that, that problem, right? So the best thing that can happen is him using the, the Garp ability to KO my blocker and then attack me for like 5. Uh, I would be okay with that. Um, he might just force the uh, the 1k out of my hand. I don't really want to combo my Gecko because on the on the black um, against the black um, decks, I do want to um, uh, to play like multiple Geckos because they give me a lot of advantage. So we'll see what happens here. If he decides to attack with a Garp, I'll just block. Um, he saves himself one car by doing so. But no, he just plays the A-drop and let, tells me to go, which is fine. Now I have a second uh, Mihawk, and Mihawk is very good against them. Because it's a card that has a lot of, like, like the number is 9, which is hard for them to reduce enough for it to be able to kill easily. Not even with this guy, because this guy only gives them minus 3, and minus 3 will put it at 6. And 6 is not is under the range of um, this guy, the... Um, Sakatsuki. So it's not really easy for them to deal with. They need an extra card for them to reduce the cost so they can remove my Sakatsuki, my uh, Mihawk. So it's perfectly well started uh, for what's happening here right now. And yeah, I mean, that's really good for me. He decides to play another of the uh, the four cost card, play the blocker. So he has a fat graveyard right now, which is good for him. Uh, and he's just going to pass i assume attacks me for six uh, i don't really want to take it but it's fine i'll take this one and then i'll block the uh the eight but he doesn't attack thinking that he will most likely will lose the eight but if he doesn't attack he's never gonna win and now i get to just play another nine for free and uh, yeah let's why not let's just keep attacking the leader and put the pressure on my opponent uh because i mean we're winning on, on on board right now uh we just have to force them to like, I have to stop them from doing what I'm doing to him, right? Which is, um, like, let him develop the board and, and like, getting powerful cards into the board. And I have to stop that. And I attack the uh, the Borsalino again because I want him to give me cards and have low hand size so his removal is less effective. However, I do uh, he does let the second one die. And I do um, hit the impact wave out of life. So I lose my blocker. So I could be losing one of my Mihawks here depending on what my opponent is going to do. And, um, it depends. But he uses another of the four cost cards. So, again, he has a, a very big graveyard. But, however, he actually missed. He got the one drop only. And that's a really bad miss in this uh, spot. So, we'll see. I mean, the game seems pretty over to me. I think I have the overwhelming advantage at this moment. Um... He may want to one half to use that one as a blocker instead, but no, okay. So he attack, and now he attacks my leader. I'm definitely gonna out combo out of that one because I don't wanna give him a, like an easy way to attack my leader for big numbers. 
since he's running out of resources, he's going to start uh, getting desperate. I'm going to start to use that one. I'm going to attack for five and for five. If he combos out of that one, I just attack for nine with my leader. Uh, but then I leave him completely hand handless. And that's what I want to do. And I could play the, uh, the Usopp. But I think a better play here is just play the Gecko, get the blocker, use the blocker to secure the top of my deck, and play another card. That's just way better to me in, like, what I'm thinking is just, like, instead of playing an Usopp and doing, like, yeah, sure, I can bounce it back and whatever, but it's much better to just do this play, and then next turn, I mean, he's got to pull miracles to be able to remove all my all the cards in my hand, in my board. And yeah, the leader gets dual attack and maybe can remove one of them. Um, but that's going to cost him two cards from hand. And then he's not going to advance the uh, the life total. I'm still at six life, so he's going to have a tough time going for uh, for game. And I'm going to combo two cards because, I mean, the cards in my hand are not like that detrimental at this moment. So we'll see what what's going to happen here. Again, he can get dual attack here. With the leader and he's gonna do that uh i will of course block the first one because if you if he wants to use the leader ability i am a-ok -okay with that and he does go ahead and do that to remove my mihawk and i'm okay with that i'm i'm, I'm not uh, upset with this result uh instead i'm just gonna attack here uh get a free blocker out of the top of my deck uh arrange this a little bit so i can keep using the leader every turn and uh as long as i have the blockers it's just gonna be okay for me uh, yes, he can get back the uh, the six drop out of the life out of the graveyard. I mean, um, but that's okay because I'm just just destroy it. And as long as he doesn't have any board, I am gonna win the late game because I can replace my board consistently. But he cannot. Like it's not that easy for him to replace the board. The board. And uh, at any point, I'm trying to play around the eight drop all the time. Uh, but this hand right now is just good enough to uh, to push my opponent to the limit here. And I'm going to attack with everything because, again, I'm not in any danger of dying. And if he wants to do a dual attack with the leader again, that's fine. That's two cards out of the hand. And, yeah, my opponent just scoops out and, and leaves the game because it's just impossible to uh, to win from there. Okay, and we're going to play against uh, Magellan Meg, as I call it in my challenge, in my channel. Um, we're going to mulligan because we don't have any way to get perfect. <laughs> We don't have Perona, that's what we don't have. And we wanna have Perona. Woo, lovely. Uh, top. This Sogekin is actually gonna be really good in this matchup. So we're gonna keep it to draw. So let's do this one last. Uh, this one next, then this one, then this one, then this one. Sounds about right. I like it. Okay, here I'm gonna put the metal. What is the expression? <laughs> put, put the metal, the pedal to the metal. Um, we're gonna deal damage and we're gonna uh, put, the, put our guy on and we're gonna do that next turn as well. Uh, I'm gonna try to save it if he doesn't attack with a big number. I should have maybe drawn the 2k actually. <laughs> kind of a mistake i'm gonna let it die i guess uh it's fine he probably plays oh sorry okay okay well still gonna do the same play the card from the top of her deck play the blocker and play the spada uh, as a defensive measure here he has cards in hand now so he is annoying he could also play the mcgill the him make uh, this turn. Mm. I want to look at the top cards just in case. Ooh, placing at the top. I want to draw that one, and this is a good order for this one actually. Uh, just in case to see what they're gonna do. If he attacks with this one, uh, I have a good chance. I, I just I just play the cards that I have on top of my deck. If he doesn't, then I just bounce it, bounce back the uh, koala or whatever he plays here. So it is based on what they do here. Um, okay, so he does play it. So I have to play my game the other way. OK, 
Okay, I'll drop her turn. I'm not gonna attack with the with this guy, however, because uh, there is no reason to. I'm just gonna play the blocker. Place on the top. <laughs> My opponent just surrenders. Uh, they don't know what to do here. <laughs> I'm a fight life, and there they start. They have to start defending their leader like aggressively here from now on. So it's it's, it's difficult. I I understand. But I, I mean, I think he gave up too too early. But if he KOs this one, I get to eat something for free. I understand. It's just I think it's too early for uh, for him to be give up. Okay, and we're gonna start against uh, Nami. Uh, we have Perona, so we keep. That's always uh, the way it works with this leader. Um, I have a decent hand here. Place on top because I can bounce back the guy that meals. That's gonna be really good for me. Mm, top. I guess I'll, I'll play. Okay, so this is gonna how it's gonna work. This guy. Perona. This guy. This guy and oh, I messed it up. So I'm gonna do the three drop last turn, next turn, I guess. It makes sense. I wanted to play it out of the leader, uh, but it's fine. Not the biggest deal. This way, at least I have a blocker untapped. Attacking for 5 is so good against them. Because they don't have too many 5Ks. Or the ones that they have, they don't want to pitch them. Yeah. Attacking for 5 or for 6. Just about the same. Oh, now I do get something good here. I could keep this one up. Use it as defense. But I don't think he's going to attack me either way. So here. Sorry, so I'm going to draw this one then. So... This one, this one, this one, this one. I've still messed it up. I'm, <laughs> I'm out of touch with this one, actually. <laughs> it should be the boa after. Okay. So they are actually milling themselves pretty quickly here. I am scared a little bit, but it should be fine. Attack here, use the action, play the boa, and keep up the lot low beam. It's going to be really good. He might, yeah, he bounces back at the, the 2k. It's fine. We're going to be able to flood the board very quickly. Okay, so he's refilling. He's at 27 cards. That's very good for him. Alright, so we got this guy here now. Hmm. Guess I'll play the boa. I'll draw because I know there is nothing there. I'll attack with this one because I know they don't have too many 5Ks. And then I'll attack for 6. Trying to flood the board a little bit. Then they're gonna keep a lot of defense, but they cannot mill seven if they haven't played the guys, so I should be fine. I'm gonna play defense a lot here. Maybe not on the blocker, but everything else is probably gonna defend pretty aggressively. If the blocker dies, it's fine. It's not the biggest deal. But since I have the boss that can refill me pretty quickly, uh, I can defend uh, very aggressively here. This one is annoying. 
Mm, double of that one is annoying. Is it trying to kill my boa? Okay, so he gets the one drop. I assume he's gonna try to keep going. Um, I'm gonna get try to drop something that I can get back with my boa. Uh, resolve attack here. I'll drop for turn. Mm, I don't know if Mihawk is the best card for this matchup. I'm just gonna play this one. Uh, get the uh, 6k here. So on top. Uh, top. Top. Top, top, top. Yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna attack here, use the action, play this car. Attack for seven. Attack here. He has a 22 cars. He still has a lot, a lot to weigh, like a, a long way to go. Attack for six. Six is a good number again. Always been. He, that's a great card to have in pitch. Uh, get back the boa and let him go. I have to keep flooding the board with cards. Because if not, they're going to be able to mill themselves super quickly. If I'm able to attack him for 5-5-5-5-5 five, 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 five for a bunch of times, uh, I will be uh, like winning the game here. I'm going to play defense, I guess. Oh, sure. I'll combo my hand, don't worry. Trying to do sub out of nowhere. Uh, and I can actually combo my hand. Two, three, four, five. So he won't be able to uh, do that and I can get a refill with my boa. And I have love, love beam on the top of my deck. Well, I guess I'm not going to do refill with Boa, but that's fine. Still pretty okay. Uh, I'll attack the Usopp. Play the blocker. He's either going to have to let it go or I'm going to destroy it because he does need the mil 7 to win the game. If it doesn't happen, I don't think he can actually, like... Like, stop me. I'm gonna try to attack for 6-6. Six, six. Probably three sixes is gonna be fine. Because he already played, like, a couple of those. Uh, that one does not protect. The gobble doesn't protect those up. So it's fine. I don't know if he knew that, but... And now I have to uh, I have to protect myself for another one of those. So I'm definitely going to keep up to energy for uh, in case he plays another one of those. And as long as we're getting rid of the 2Ks out of his hand, I'm A-OK -okay with that. That is all I want to see. Six K again is the best number against them. They don't want out combo six K. Yeah, I have to use a, a whole gobble there to just be able to. Now he was probably counting on another Usopp and deal damage, but I'm not gonna let him. I'm gonna protect my board and I'm gonna protect my uh, what I have because this is what we we're gonna we're gonna win with this. If they cannot remove it. They cannot win. Okay, so he bounces back. Maybe this one. But there's more cards that he's playing into the board, which is fine with me. More than I'm going to be able to protect. He didn't attack with the Nami. Maybe he didn't want to give me cards. I'm okay with that, though. I don't remember if I have anything on top. I think I don't. Um, so 
So again, let's just attack for six. It's the best number that I can attack for. He wants to get back something. He's going to have to combo it. Well, he does have the six, apparently. <laughs> so I, that way I can attack more times here. It's a 15. He's close to... Um... I guess I will do have to deploy this one, so I'll end my turn here. He's trying to just play defense for the last uh, portion of the game, which is fine. It's a, it's a good strategy. I'm not going to say that it isn't. Playing Dusop. Okay, that's fine. He's trying to get me to hit me with Dusop. It's not going to happen. Oh, he's just the last ditch effort to hit me and win the game, right? But I don't think he's even going to work, even if he were to connect, which I guess I need a 1k here. Which I do get. I guess I did know that one. And I win because he just couldn't, he's not going to be able to defend here. All right. And for the final thoughts, I think this deck is going to do very well into the next format. Uh, I, for what I've noticed, it has a decent yellow matchup, and uh, I haven't found really the, the matchup that is giving me like the hardest uh, problem. Um, maybe something like Law could be like a difficult matchup, because uh, we don't have too much early removal. Uh, but I don't really think that's that big of a deal. Uh, however, just again, the deck is just been performing very well, so I do think it's going to be good into the next format. Uh, with that being said, that's all I have to say. Thank you all for watching and have a good one.